Welcome back. I'm glad you joined us. We're here to talk about achievement cultures. If you were here in previous pieces, you saw us talk about role, you saw us talk about power, and you saw us talk a little bit about the power for a culture inside of every organization. Well, we've come back to talk about achievement. It's one of the things that people are most interested in. It's one of the things we get most excited about around here. If you have a high, high achievement culture, there's a certain feeling inside of your organization, and we call that feeling that feeling of vitality, that, that sense of we're all in this together, we are all pulling in the same direction, we're teammates, everybody kind of has a voice and there's real good synergy, not to overuse that word, but high achievement culture is very synergistic and very vital, vitality driven, everybody feels great inside of these. Now, I didn't invent this, we just know that that's how people feel. And we do enough of this kind of work where we, where we measure the results. And we know that most people want a high achievement culture. Managers, employees, everybody wants a high achievement culture. On a, on a low level inside of these, uh, these achievement cultures, you'll find a high level of frustration. This frustration by itself it doesn't really mean much. It's just a word. Until employees start to leave and they start to go to places where they can feel this higher, more vital environment. So we know that this is not only an employee draw, but this is where managers do their very best work inside of these high achievement cultures. And when you get the luxury of having everybody be on the same page in terms of a high achievement culture, you really have something that's, that's critically important. Now, let me invite you to come back at another time. We, we have a, what we call a four-legged stool of achievement, which outlines what these, four, what these elements are that makes a difference in that achievement culture. We're glad to share that with you. Come on, come on back at another time. But for right now, I'd like to talk about what the upside and downside of achievement cultures are. This is what we call a dark side to achievement. If you have a very high achievement culture and it's not supported in another way, you find yourself uh, with a lot of people burned up. Uh, they, the stress level becomes very high. Every day you have to exceed yesterday and there's a real sense of stress and anxiety. You can't have a bad day. It feels very uh, much like you have to be on all the time. If you, if you get down here into this low achievement culture, the dark side there is it's a feeling of complacency, like you're sleepwalking through your job every day. You're not bringing your full thing. You find people in those low achievement cultures are actually doing more outside of their work than they're doing inside of their work. So driving this number, and you can change this as an organization, is really critically important. So again, as I, as I said earlier, we're gonna, we'll have a, we have a piece on the four-legged stool that gives you a little bit more detail if you'd like to see it. But I want you to understand that there is what we currently have and what we prefer, and you need to hear from employees around that. That will be helpful as you start to figure out what to do around this achievement culture. Finally, all the pieces again are connected. You can't disconnect one from another and just create an achievement culture with a proper level of support. Come on back and join us. We'll be glad to talk to you about support, uh, and thank you for joining us.